Hey there, and welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you the exact steps that you need to take to get from never arranging anything at all on the harp to arranging the songs that you wanna play with confidence and with ease. I'm gonna show you my whole blueprint right now, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're tuned in for the whole thing. It's taken me more than nine years of struggling and practice to dial in this process and really perfect it, so if you wanna take the shortcut to everything that I've learned, here it is. In the last three videos, I talked about why the Foundational Arranging Toolbox is the best way to make arranging easy and accessible. I showed you how to write your very first arrangement, even with no prior experience, plus my best mindset tip to take the stress and the frustration out of your arranging process. So if you haven't watched those first three videos yet, you're going to want to make sure you do that because they're filled with a lot of really practical information that show you the first steps that you can take to get started right now. So with that being said, let's jump right into the Foundational Arranging Blueprint. So looking at the flow chart over here, the first step is really about understanding the big picture of how music works. Most people get caught up on individual notes, but they don't really see what's going on with the melody and the harmony. So if you watch the second video in this series, then you already know the first steps to get started breaking a song down into those core components. But you know, there's still a lot more to it. So we've got the melody and harmony going. Then we need to understand the power of the triad and how it relates to the bass line and to the melody. And one of of my favorite ways to get into that is to learn how to read lead sheets because it really takes you out of the trap of individual notes and allows you to start recognizing patterns and how they relate to melody and harmony. Then before we go any further, we're going to want to understand the mindset of experimentation and asking what if so that we don't get stuck as we move on to the next stage. And if you've watched the third video in the series, then you'll know all about how that works. So then it's time to fill up the toolbox. As I've mentioned in previous videos, the foundational arranging toolbox is all about learning different patterns or arranging elements or what I call tools, whatever you want to call them, uh, that you can draw on really comfortably, like taking tools out of a toolbox when you need them. So I find that the best way to do this is to pick a relatively simple song. Folk music in particular is great for this. And then you try out all your different tools in that song so you get really familiar with them. So as far as tools go, I find that first it's usually best to start off with tools for the left hand, playing around with harmony, learning accompaniment patterns, um, because you may not even realize if the left hand is already used to playing all kinds of patterns, so that's usually the easiest place to start. Then we want to learn some tools for the right hand and play around with the melody. There's lots of simple things you can do with the range, adding chord tones, ornaments, changing up the rhythm, all kinds of things that will make your arrangement sound really sophisticated. So you can always add as many tools as you want kind of at this stage, getting more complex as you go. I always think it's best to start with the basics and then add more complexity as you go along. And you can just do that at a pace that works for your current level. At this point, we wanna learn how to make intros, outros and interludes and these are really awesome because they can really expand your arrangement and give it space to breathe and you actually don't really have to learn anything new. You can take existing elements from the arrangement and from the toolbox and insert them to really round out the piece a lot more. So you can take pieces of the melody or even just remove the melody aspect altogether and just use harmonic patterns to add some space in the arrangement. Then at this point, we're gonna talk about the role of rhythm and its role in our writing. So the awesome thing about rhythm is that you can actually combine it with all of the other tools that you've learned so far to multiply the options you have at your disposal. As you kind of go along using this method, what you start to find is that, something that I say pretty often is that it's all the same, but it's all different. So it's stuff you already know, it's stuff you're already comfortable with, but you're just modifying it slightly to create something that's new. And so rhythm has a big role in that. Rhythm also plays a role in genre of the music that you're writing, as well as balance between the hands and the intensity of the arrangement, which we're going to talk about right now. So after that, we're going to talk about the pacing of an arrangement. We want to think about how everything is fitting together because all the tools that we've learned so far either increase or decrease the amount of tension or intensity in the music and so an effective arrangement will manage that to kind of increase and decrease the intensity sort of like the narrative of a story. So then at this point you will have the big picture of how the arranging process works in the context of the song that you've been working on because my method, the way I teach it, we focus on kind of one song to start with. You can learn as many tools as you want, kind of learn these basic things. And then, you know, you're going to want to move on to other songs, of course. <laughs> There's going to be lots of songs that you want to play. So I kind of call this section arranging in the wild. 
So it's at this point that it's most relevant to learn how to apply everything that you've done so far to whatever songs you might encounter in the wild. So things like adapting from reference sheet music, adjusting for lever harp, adjusting for pedal harp, adjusting for small harp, everything kind of up to that point I think is is quite general across harps. It's mostly kind of adjusting for range, adjusting for accidentals and that kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, you might want to think too about if you want to write for harp and other instruments. So that's just to name a few. Now, all of this and more, a lot more, <laughs> is covered in my upcoming course, which is called Arranging for Harpists. I will show you in detail how to see the big picture of how music works without using lots of complicated music theory, as well as show you how to use each pattern or tool or whatever you want to call it in detail so that you can see how it's applied to a real song. You're literally going to be able to watch over my shoulder as I walk you through all of what we just talked about and you can just follow along and implement it step by step. So you're going to want to make sure that you're on the lookout for when Arranging for Harpists launches because this is literally the best and most robust information that I've ever released and you can probably tell just from the last few videos that it's way more than I can fit in just a couple of YouTube videos. So if you haven't already, you're going to want to make sure you sign up for the Early Bird waitlist by clicking the link below this video so that you can be the first to reserve your spot before the course goes live to the public. In the next video, I'm going to share a specific example with you of exactly what it looks like once you're up and running with the Foundational Arranging Toolbox. I'm going to show you a detailed case study of one of my actual students that shows you how fast you can get results once you can see the big picture and have the tools at your disposal to play freely and just express your creative voice. So stay tuned because it's going to be a good one. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.